Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to write some algebraic expressions. Alright, we've got five questions here. The first one asks us to write an expression to represent three more than a number. So for each of these, it uses the word a number or a number, so I'm going to use n for number. You don't have to, you could use any variable, but why not use n? It starts with, a uh, number starts with n, you might as well. So three more than a number. Um, we need to think, what does it mean if we have, we're doing, finding three more than something? Um, could we express that with an operation? If you imagine maybe three more than 10, that would be 13. And that's the same as 10 plus 3. So it's going to be the same here. We could have n plus 3. Um, and you could also have 3 plus n. Now some teachers would prefer one or the other, um, but I think in my mind those are exactly the same. Um, either one is totally fine. Three more than the number n. All right, uh, six times the number. So six times the number, this one I think is maybe one of the easier ones because uh, most people when they see six times, they think of multiplication right away. So six times the number, you could have the number times six. Or you could write six times the number. Um, and actually, the best, uh, sort of most professional looking way is to write 6n like this. Um, when we have multiplication between a number and a variable, we don't need to write the multiplication sign. And this one here, I think this, looks the best. I'm going to write this the most professional. All of these are correct, but that one looks the most uh, most professional. All right, four less than a number. This one actually, I think, might be the hardest of all of them. I'm going to write a little note here. Be careful with the subtraction order. So certainly my students, they're much more likely to make a mistake on a subtraction question than on an addition or multiplication question. So four less than a number. Um, I'm going to write down two answers here. Now, in this case, they're not both right. One of them is right, one is wrong. So we'll put question marks. The question is, is this... I think most people, if they see less than, they think like, oh, that's probably going to be subtraction. Four less than a number. Uh, the question is, is it four subtract n... Or is it n subtract 4? Okay, one is right and one is wrong. These do not give us the same uh, value. Now with um, addition, uh, you can change 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2, or n plus 3 is the same as 3 plus n. But it's not the, the case with subtraction. If you change the order, it changes the value. So only one of these is correct. Um, so I would encourage you to do the following every time you're doing a subtraction a sort of problem like this, at least until you're really experienced with it. Um, I actually like to draw this little stick person here, and the stick person has a thought bubble. Um, and I kind of write it like this to show me this isn't going to be my actual answer, this is going to be how I think about the answer. So what I'm gonna, how I'm going to think about it is I'm going to replace a number with an actual number. Right? Just to think about it, to decide is it 4 subtract n or n subtract 4. So let's do a couple examples. Suppose it was 4 less than 6. What would that be? Well, that's 2. And how could we get that? Well, we could do 6 subtract 4 equals 2. Now, suppose we had another one. Suppose it was four less than, I don't know, say 11. So that's seven, how could we get that? We could do 11 subtract four equals seven. So this, um, and you may want to do more examples, until, at least until you get practiced at this. So what if we did every time? Four less than a number, now here's the 6. My 6 came first and I subtracted 4. If it was 4 less than 11, my 11 came first and I subtracted 4. So 4 less than a number, the number n has to come first and I'll subtract 4. So this is correct and this one is wrong. 
All right, so be really careful with those subtraction questions. It's really easy to get the order backwards, especially because if you look at the order, four came first in the wording, but it doesn't come first in the answer. All right, uh, moving on to part D, 80 divided by a number. Um, and I think this one is... Uh, relatively straightforward because the, of the way the wording. The problem with sub subtraction is just the words, the way that we talk about subtraction um, ma doesn't match up as well with the way that we write it down uh, with symbols. But most of the ways we talk about the other operations uh, match up pretty well. So 80 divided by a number. We start with 80, then we divide by a number. Um, and I'll also suggest this way. So this is the same thing. I'm just using this other division symbol. 80 divided by n like that. And this one, I think, is also the most professional. Um, so these ways look really good. This is totally correct. And that, I would say, is even better. All right, and part E, a number is subtracted from 60. Um, so we know it's a subtraction, so we want to be really careful with the subtraction order. So what we're going to do is we'll do a little thought bubble with some examples, just the same as we did before. Let's get a little thinking person here. Okay, so let's think. A number is subtracted by 60. Let's change that from a number to an actual number. Let's say like 10 is subtracted from 60. Okay, so what would that be? That would give you 50. So how do we get that? We do 60 subtract 10 equals 50. Now I'd like to point out um, what the my answer here, the 50, is not, we're not even using that. We don't actually even need that. But people tend to like to write that. But if you'd like, you can just write 60 subtract 10. That's just as helpful. Um, and let's do another number, uh, another example. A number is subtracted from 60, so let's say, um, I don't know, 20? 25. Subtracted from 60, so what's that going to give us? That would be 60, take away 25. So feel free to do some more examples if you don't see the pattern yet. But what in each case here, if 10 is subtracted from 60, that means we start with 60 and then we take away 10. So a number is subtracted from 60, we're going to start with 60 and then we'll take away in this case it was 10, in this case it was 25, and here it's going to be a, um, a, a variable n. Okay, now one thing that students often ask me is, um, once they've got this, then they say, well, then what? Uh, this is the answer. The question asked us to write an algebraic expression, and this is an expression. All of these are expressions. Um, in at other times, we'll be able to do other things with these expressions. Maybe someone will say, "Well, okay, well, if n is uh, four, then what? What's the value of sixty subtract n?" But in this case, this is the final answer. We we're asked to write an expression, and that's what we have. So the final answer has the variable in it. Um, your final answer for a question like this isn't just a number; it's an expression that includes at least one variable. All right. Good luck.